in the LMS, though. And of course, now with absolutely no pressure and only the ability to play spoiler, is this the time that G-Rex can cause the upset? Take a look to the band. Uh, Thresh, Alistair, Urgot, Akali, Siva, uh, as well as Aatrox. That means yet another Irelia blind pick, but it does fit that narrative we've talked about. It is a flex option if Whippo wants to take it. And the lovers duo, Zion Rakan locked in for G-Rex. Now this brings into question, does Hillisang play um, Leona? Or would he choose to go for more of a comfort pick and pike? Now, the thing about Rakan <laughs> is that I feel you could play both, and we're actually yet to see Hellasang bring out his fabled pike. Um, but instead, he's going to go for more of the defensive option. Maybe he wants to hold the cards closer to his chest. Door number three is going to be the man who holds the door. Braum here for Fnatic, and it is going to back up. Of course, we glossed over the first pick, Aurelia, for yes. Fnatic, for Caps. Again, around this guy in the mid lane. He's gone for dives. He always goes for the early kill. Uh, and that could still be a possibility in this game going up against Candy. Second one rounded out here, though, with the Ezreal for Reckless. That will give him, uh, you know, the Mystic Sock poke, of course, trying to stay back until he can get his first recall. And so with the LeBlanc locked in for Candy, this kind of puts uh, Fnatic in a situation where if they want to draft the Aurelia, I don't think this is the worst matchup. I think it's a bit of a skill matchup between the two mid laners. Mm. Um, but alternatively, in the event that that Aurelia is topside, uh, LeBlanc is considered a pretty safe blind. And you'll see that with the Lissandra ban coming in as well, they're saying, all right, Fnatic, if you want to pick something else, I feel we're actually going to have a pretty solid matchup going for this blind LeBlanc. Meanwhile, for G-Rex, what we said in their last game, so much about Stitch, so much about trying to get some carry opportunities here uh, for them early and from around the bottom lane. This is definitely a great duo for them to go with. You know, Rakan, increased playmaking ability with the Zaya, and they have to respect the level two. So much damage output you can, uh, you know, get with that combo. That's why Fnatic, I think, have drafted such a safe bottom lane here. Ezreal and Braum, a lot of mobility even early in the game. And let's see where the junglers decide to go with the Lee Sin, the Camille, the Nocturne taken off the table. We've seen Xin Zhao actually featured in the ban pool fairly heavily and will not be locked in just yet. Going to be securing that safe top laner in Scion once more. And that will be secured for PK. So now Fnatic have to tell us where does this Irelia go and what will Broxa be running in the jungle? Well. He can already tell you what he's running in the jungle, Trevor. That's going to be the Xin Zhao. The very early game focus compositions from both sides. Fnatic more than happy to grab that one for themselves. A couple of cheeky hovers there from Hillisang as he runs through some potential options. And we still don't know whether or not this Aurelia is mid or top. You would expect it to be in the mid lane. And they could round their draft out with an Orn. Offers a little bit of engage for the composition and is something that Whipper would play a lot of during the regular season. And it was the same champion that he used the last time they played. Instead, it is the Swain, still technically the swap. So, Kobe, who's going to call the bluff here on the side of T-Rex? Ooh! Uh, what, what's your bluff that you're talking about? I see no bluff. <laughs> I think it's going to be the Swain here for uh, Caps in the mid lane into the LeBlanc. Uh, try and build up some defenses there. As long as you don't get bursted down, Swain has huge zoning for the team fights. But more exciting, we got a Nidalee <laughs> in the game. This champion can clear so quickly if you get an early lead. So we'll see if Bebe now subbing in for G-Rex can try and get them their first win on the board. Now, one of the cool things I love about Nidalee is her ability to get into the enemy jungle, steal away their camps, and then get out extremely quickly. The only way she can do that, though, is if she has pressure in the lanes. And given that they've drafted a LeBlanc, they've drafted a Zyra Khan, you would expect that, especially towards the bottom side of the map, uh, G-Rex would be in a comfortable position to allow Bebe to get those invades. But when we wanted to see Empty being aggressive, he got shut down. So the question is, will Bebe have a uh, more healthy, fun, not dying early game compared to his uh, jungle counterpart uh, from IG? Meanwhile, the Swain was switched with Aurelia, so Caps once again will be taking that Aurelia into the mid lane, uh, looking for the heads up versus LeBlanc. Uh, see which one of those two can get the early kill. Both, of course, will take Ignite and look to fight. So you're saying they did call their bluff in the other hand then? <laughs> I still, I don't think it was a bluff. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how this uh, early game plays out. We had high expectations for G-Rex in the previous game against Invictus, and it did not go as expected. And, of course, for Fnatic, 
They really styled on G-Rex the last time these two teams played. Fnatic are confirmed for the quarterfinals. The question is what seed and in what manner will the European representatives head to the playoffs? Let's take a look at how this early game starts off. Kleptomancy for Whippo and Reckless, both starting with their teleports. <laughs> And that's a little bit of a, a, a nuance that I'm not used to seeing. I mean, Whippo, he played so many mages uh, for Fnatic in the regular season going bottom lane. He runs right out of the gate through the bottom lane yeah, this time around. Yeah, that's, that's the ultimate bluff, Trevor. It turns <laughs> out Whippo's bot lane, Reckless in the top lane. <laughs> Fnatic going crazy. Solo lane, Ezreal through the top. No, okay. So he is probably just setting up here as a level one. You know, they're fishing around for possible plays from G-Rex. I like that because level ones have had pretty big impact. Oh, yeah. Uh, in group stage here, best of ones when you're looking for uh, those upset possibilities. And so they're just kind of checking all their bases. Of course, the Swain with Leptomency, uh, very good into the Scion as you can get your damage off through the minion wave as well as getting your auto attacks down at the same time to farm up, get as much uh, value out of your Kleptomancy uh, on that melee champion as possible. Scion, of course, once the E was gutted, the Shout uh, relies a lot more on Q Max trying to hit that uh, channel and go for those AOEs. So I'm keeping my eyes on where the junglers are starting. Uh, we'll see that for Bebe and PK, they're starting up towards the top side of the map, whereas Broxer is doing a solo clear down towards the bot. Now this is important for Reckless and Hillisane because against Isaiah Rakan, this is a difficult matchup. They want to get to the lane as soon as possible, but of course, Stitch and Koala don't have to pull either. Uh, so that lane will be pretty neutral as actually Reckless gets that early push. But keep your eyes on which direction Bebe chooses to go for, because he's actually moving up towards the Krugs, a jungle path that we've been seeing a lot more junglers take recently, whereas Broxer, he's going straight to mid. Well, there we go, early flash already at level one to get out of the duet. Yeah, they saw Broxa on this pixel ward uh, right here in the river. However, they had just used Candy's distortion in a trade with Caps. So that's an early flash in this assassin matchup. Could easily be tilted the other way. Bebe now uh, walking to top. Scuttle also revealed and they will have tracking on him for the time being. All right, so splitting the map thus far, Brox is gonna get that Sentinel as Bebe just starts, gonna trade the Gromp as well. And then we're gonna take a look at how the lane setup uh, continues to play out. Caps always on the aggressive, always playing on the front foot. But if we check down the bottom lane, Reckless and Hilly, they're pushing into Stitch and Koala for the time being, although it looks like it's bouncing back. Exactly, I like this ability for Fnatic to force the map split. When you invade with your jungler to the enemy blue side like this, you can cut off any sort of support for the bottom lane. So Fnatic taking the camps on the bottom half of the map here uh, with Jin Zhao allows both caps as well as their bottom lane with Reckless and Hilla saying to have that security. That's allowing them to play all the way forward. Take a quick glance at Weppo and PK. They're trading for the time being. This is the half of the map where G-Rex have that little bit of an advantage. Whippo is being pushed in, manages to get a lot of damage down with the Death's Hand. This is very close to a solo kill, but the minions are gonna do so much work if Whippo sticks around. Take a look for the Javelin Toss. Here comes Bebe, can jump under the tower. Death's Hand and a tower shot, helping out Whippo. And PK was too low to stick around. Yeah, Whippo does still have his flash, so, so difficult to try and land a spear or anything. The only way you commit to that is if you know he's low enough to just go for the uh, Q as far as the execute, and that is going to be enough to ward them off that possible dive. So Whippo is just going to reset, go back to base, TP back in. PK has just done that as well and picked himself up a health crystal, but he's already built himself up a pretty healthy early game lead. And you got to remember that as the Scion, you don't have a huge amount of wave clear, but thinking more about the draft, it was clear that Fnatic, they wanted that extra bit of AP damage. They wanted to have that threat on the other side, and that's why they locked in the Swain along with its flexibility. Now Fnatic spot lane, they tried to go in, but Hill saying he missed. Yeah, cheeky usage of that melee minion all the way up front, using the stand behind me, doesn't find the target. But I like what I'm seeing from Bebe already. Uh, in the previous game, there was some expectation and pressure on him to, to step up in the early stages of the game. And as G-Rex and Fnatic split the map for the first five minutes, Bebe now finds himself uh, looking for a javelin toss onto Caps. There's vision provided by Candy, so could be like shooting fish in a barrel if Bebe can find the right target. Okay, Bebe sticking around behind the Raptor ward here. Broxa now does have vision on him. Pop the ward, though. Uh, it looks like they are going to go for the uh, 
decent skirmish uh, rotating both supports through the river, but nobody committing. Kobe, you can feel the tension building, but neither team willing to commit just yet. So playing patient, playing a little bit cautious, and Reckless is able to pick up that sheen and use his teleport back into lane with a very advantageous start. Exactly, they're trying to keep up the pressure here. They push the minion wave hard from the very beginning, using this teleport very quickly to make sure he has an item advantage. There's no way for uh, Stitch to get similar uh, combat power right now. They're forced to stick here and try and shove this lane out. I completely agree with you, Kobe. And that's one of the advantages that you have of the TP. But of course, the combat summon over here will be much more valuable if they were to go for the all in two versus two, which you would imagine Reckless and Hillisang will want to avoid for the time being. But in terms of this early game, things have been relatively slow. No huge plays have been forced either side. And if we're looking at who is who you expect to make the more aggressive early game playmaking, it will be G Rex with the LeBlanc, with the Zyra Khan, especially when these level sixes come through, is when I, I want to see Bebe trying to force something with his lane. All right, I'll keep my eyes on his positioning for the time being he's up at the crux. And looking at the CS discrepancies, eight or nine advantage for Bwipo, around 10 for Reckless. And even in the mid lane, it is very, very close. But Bwipo's gonna be in a little bit of trouble. Forced to throw down the ultimate, and now he's looking to escape. Looking to turn this around. The burst is available, the souls are there. Flashing out of the tower, unable to find the kill, but he doesn't get caught by the javelin either. PK flashes oh. to safety. Bwipo wins a 1v2. Bwipo stands tall in that 1v2. Really wanted the explosion there right there, not close enough to finishing off either of them, but in the end, he also got the flash bottom lane. Oh, Reckless gets knocked up into the air. There's no summon to heal, remember. They managed to pick up one before Stitch takes down Reckless. Defensive flash from Hillisang as Caps is looking for Stitch. It's a flashless bird, a flightless bird, a stunned up bird, and Caps will be able to pick this up. That's three to one in kill for Fnatic. Very close right there. An extra minion is close enough, though. Hillsang doesn't take that tower shot. Fnatic do get the extra kill back from the rotation down bottom. Candy now, the straggler looking to clean up. Oh, let's see. What has he got? Flash and ignite available. Needs to pick the right target. Dun, 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 dun. Hunting. Going to come under the tower. 200 hit points and Candy unfortunately picks the wrong target. His ultimate was on cooldown. Wasn't willing to commit the flash and Hilly escapes with his life. So we talked about Fnatic's bot lane not looking for an all-in, and honestly, this is just a big mistake from Reckless. He doesn't respect the positioning of the feathers. Hillisang is forced to do everything he can to keep him alive, and while they are able to get themselves first blood, it looks like Stitch is going to get two kills. Fortunately for them, Caps roams down. And while that's all going on, Brox is roaming up towards the top side of the map. He's like, oh, hello, PK. You've got no flash, so you're going to die. He yep. burns his summoner spells. He finds the execute, and Fnatic, Seven minutes in, find themselves three kills. What a big, big change of events here. Huge early game now for Fnatic. Reckless after that, getting back, purchasing his tier as well for the Ezreal, but top lane again, we've got more action. All right, Visions of the Empire comes out. The Jewett actually finds a stun and that allows the Swain passive to pull PK backwards, but there's not enough damage just yet. It's a Negatron Cloak and Mercury Treads for Cap, so they decide not to go for the dive. And while we've we had to talk a lot about what happened. We didn't get to properly appreciate the fact that Bwipo, in a one versus two, was able to get away with his life. Oh, I appreciated Almost, it. I mean, but <laughs> truly appreciate the fact- Not just get away with his life, <laughs> make them run exactly. for their homes. And that's all that bot lane practice that he had throughout the year. It was constantly <laughs> the Swain Pike down at the gone. duo. I like it. I like it, it was brought it together. <laughs> so now Bwipo looking for another 1v1. All right, let's see if we can do it this time around. Got that demonic ascension available. Here comes the vision of the Empire. We're just following the run down. Now, Pika's got the uh, ultimate. If he needs to get that extra burst of speed, Whippo's going to step all the way forward, pulls him back into the passive, the burst, and the 1v1. And that's all his solo queue practice in top lane, helping him out in that regard, It Benian. certainly is Whippo. He gets himself a solo kill. And this is the difference between him and Soaz. Soaz is the rock, the guy that is always consistent and will get through the laning phase and will be value later on into the game. Whippo is the guy that will build leads himself, look to be a carry, and so far in this game, he's found some fantastic play. Yeah, he really is, and now there's gonna be another play set up in the mid lane. Candy will be able to get out of range of the lawnmower. Caps' Vanguard pitch <laughs> does not find a target. 
And just to sum it up, it is currently a two and a half thousand gold lead in favor of Fnatic, with a lot of it sitting inside Whippo's hand. Yeah, right now is a period of time where Zinsao is definitely more powerful than Nidalee. There's a, something with the construction of jungle items. The AP jungle item, Runic Echoes, uh, does not have a lot of power until you complete the whole thing. Sitting on a mana crystal feels extremely bad. You don't get combat stats. Uh, Zin, well, meanwhile, you can get your hammer, your long swords, just fine. Pretty smooth build up to the completion. But once Nidalee does complete the Runic Echoes, it's an 80 ability power item. You get a lot from the completion and they can then look to play more aggressive again. Uh, you'll have a lot more oomph to your spear hits uh, and can actually you know, fight much better in 2v2 scenarios. You can also see that Bebe hanging around the top side jungle. He has struggled so far this game to have much of an impact. He's doing pretty well in farms and in terms of levels, but as you say, Kobe, Due to the early itemization, he's kind of afraid of going for any early skirmishes against that Xin Zhao. So Jirik still looking for an opportunity back into the game. They're at a pretty significant early game deficit, just like they were against Invictus Gaming. But they do still have LeBlanc. They do still have Stitch on this Zyra Khan. And I would like to see now him invest some time to either the mid or the bot to get some kills back on the board. And of course, while all those shenanigans were going on in the top lane, uh, Jirik were able to pick up that Infernal Drake. It is important to point that out. If the game does go long, um, it will be beneficial, but it's such a difficult scenario once again when we've seen how confident and how dominant Fnatic have been with the lead. And look how much magic resistance Caps is stacking here against that little block to deny the possibility of those kills. This is because he is facing not only an AP assassin opponent in the mid lane, but the jungler's AP as well. And that's one of the bad things about AP junglers. Here we go, though. We might have another fight on our hands. Yeah, look at everybody waiting in the wings. G-Rex, look for the counter engage. Hillisung gets tagged by a javelin top. Once Broxus shows his face, and the teleport begins to channel, G-Rex realized they do not want this fight. Whippo's not done yet. He's won a 1v2. He's won a 1v1. Now is he going to go for the 1v3? Gets rooted up in place by Candy's change and Fnatic. They commit the teleport. They don't get anything else. Whippo's like, if I'm TPing down here to save you guys again, we're getting something off the back of it. So he's walking underneath the turret. The rest of Fnatic abandoned him. He's like, fine. He has to now make his way back and pulls the top side. All right, Whippo's going to look for a fight yet. Got the ultimate available to him if PK decides to stick around, but he doesn't. Instead, the mid lane siege is where it's at. Broxa now fancies his chances in a 1v2, and he just obliterates Candy. Ooh. It's that smooth item power spike you talked about. Vanguard's Edge goes all the way in. Caps continues to dive. Hilly joins the fray. The stun onto Koala, and they steal away the life from G-Rex. That's a flashboard from Whippo. Demonic Ascension manages to oh. push. Not gonna find it with the vision of the Empire and PK escapes with his life. Go speed, racer, go! PK barely able to outrage that one. Drives off into the sunset. That is still going to be such a big win for Fnatic, though. They are just winning fights all across the map at the same time right now. Every single skirmish seems to go in their favor. Even though uh, G-Rex gets some gold back, it's never nearly as much here as what Fnatic are taking. And let's have a look at how this all kicked off. Broxa, he sees a low health LeBlanc. He thinks, you know what? I think I can take this even in a two versus one. Good use of the ultimate to create a gap, but the ignite was down and I believe the red spider as well. And that was enough to secure the kill. Meanwhile, <laughs> I mean, fortunately, Hillisang was there to help tank up the tower. And with the damage from the Aurelia, who had pretty much completed the wit's end, you knew you had more than enough damage. And then here it is, the, the drift away. He walks away with his life. Yep, at uh, not a whole lot more. Bebe and PK, they're now looking for a reply into Whippo. He's going to use that stopwatch that he picked up a lot earlier and buying as much time as possible. Broxa is making his way, waiting in the wings for a potential die. Yeah, G-Rex don't overcommit to that. As soon as the stopwatch is used, they saw Broxa coming up on the control ward, so they don't want to stick around to find out what's going to happen later uh, in the even terms. That is a decent cooldown. You know, breaking the stopwatch yeah. is something for them because so uh, Whippo has just been running all over top lane. Kobe, it's a 4,000 gold lead for Fnatic. Caps is looking potentially to extend that even further. But I actually asked the uh, stats team to prepare the average 15-minute stats for Fnatic 
throughout the group stage so far. They've got 100% of the first turrets they've yet to do at this game. 4.4 KDA at 15, an average of 12 CSD, but the goal difference between their average in this game is even better. And Fnatic, they are setting themselves up for a very exciting rematch with IG later in the day. And that's exactly what I wanted to follow up on, Trevor. Earlier in the day, we talked about how moving into today, the expectation was that it would be Fnatic and IG fighting for that top spot. And while last time IG got the better of them, everyone was looking at these games as an indication of what is the relative strength of both of these teams leading up to that big matchup. And so far, Fnatic, a strong game one. Invictus Gaming, they had a strong game one. And now Fnatic arguably looking even stronger. It's kind of harsh to say, but this group does feel like top two teams just punching bags here uh, on the bottom two teams <laughs> as Fnatic, as you said, just keep on punching through. And this is looking extremely one-sided, much like the earlier games. Very clear line drawn between top two and bottom two here for the group. Yep, Fnatic still maintain 100% first tower bonus throughout their five group stage games. They're nearly 6,000 gold up. Whippo continues to just bully and beat on PK in the top lane. And now that mid is opened up, Caps and Broxa start making their way down bottom. Let's see if they're going to go for the Dragon or if they're going to put pressure on the tower. The tower seems to be the objective for now. Definitely true. Even though there is plenty of vision here for G-Rex, even if you can see it coming, there's not a lot you can do about it. They just, they don't have the items purchased yet. That's a good spear that will land and kind of dissuade uh, Fnatic for now because it does buy some time. Candy is level 11 on the block. Uh, was trying to trail through. Also, no flashes on Caps or Broxa. The Vanguard's Edge was also unavailable for Caps, so Fnatic recognized they can't afford to force this fight. And Hillisang, he protects his mid laner and allows him to go back to base and is working on spending some of that gold. And I do just want to quickly bring attention to the fact that Aurelia's a lot more have been building that Wit's End as a first item. It does synergize very nicely with her passive. And given how often you find AP champions, I feel like that it is a, a good item for her. Rush instead of the train. Itself is a very gold efficient item, especially you know you, when you get the stacks going. I like that you mentioned the synergy with the passive because that also helps you stack it up quicker. And again, he's facing mid lane AP burst and an AP jungle. So the majority of the early game, everything he's going to be seeing is magic damage. Really does uh, you know make a lot of sense as far as this game, especially here now. They have so much control that they can take the objectives at their will. Dragon picked up, uh, as well as Rift Hail started now. G-Rex actually um, the ones who get that one quicker. Uh, so Mountain Drake and Infernal Drake are basically what they have to show, um, even though there is such a huge gold deficit for G-Rex to fight back from. If they can kind of stall out here, maybe they can rely on some buff power later. And it's just showing where Fnatic's priorities are. They're looking for the kills, they're looking for the towers. They actually haven't made any motion towards the Dragon whatsoever, so when Fnatic backed away, G-Rex, they did take the objective they could, but at what cost? Because, of course, Rift Herald was secured by Broxy. He's got that in his inventory, and I'm keeping my eyes on where he decides to drop Shelly. And the thing is, Fnatic are willing to give up that Dragon because Mountain Drake only gives value to G-Rex if they are able to auto-attack turrets or you know auto-attack Baron. Um, if they aren't able to get damage on these objectives, yep. then it's not going to help you out. And Kobe. as of right now, not the, looking like it's going to be The game anything. isn't going to go long enough for Fnatic to believe that Infernal and Mountain will matter, especially when you see the way they're tower diving, the way they're moving around the map. But this bottom outer turret, most definitely the target, at least for the rest of Fnatic as they were making their way down. Then Caps decides to roam back to the mid lane, and it's just chipping away at each of the objectives. Cap survives for a few seconds longer and hit Bebe one more time as Fnatic secure their ninth kill of the game. Now they turn their attention to Candy. He's running low on mana, but here comes Koala. Gets a knock up as well as at least a reply back, I think, with the Ignite. Hillisang's in a little bit of trouble, and G-Rex, they trade one for one. And that is a four kill shutdown for G-Rex in the one for one trade. So to their favor, they do get uh, those rewards, but again, it does feel like Fnatic are just pressuring so hard and they're kind of playing this play because of the lead that they have been able to accrue. And now there's only a 1900 goal difference between <laughs> the two mid laners. So the gap is definitely starting to close, but unfortunately the deficit is so huge. You can see here, 
Uh, with the amount of damage reduction that Caps has uh, from the W, he soaks up a lot of the initial burst from T-Rex, but then he takes a lot of tower shots. And fortunately, with the Ignite down and with Caps going back in range of the tower and taking another tower shot there, it allows Candy to punish him and find a shutdown kill. And for G-Rex, those are the types of very small wins that you have to look for, that you have to continue to try and count on. Uh, so it's definitely an opportunity that they need to jump on. Uh, so good job there for them punishing Fnatic and uh, getting that shutdown. There are more shutdowns for them to try and grab. Yeah, absolutely the case. G-Rex are still 7,000 gold behind. Baron is now a objective to contest. You can see Fnatic shifting all of their vision to the top quadrant. But while we have been chatting about those previous few kills, the bottom turret has fallen, the top turret has fallen. It's 3 to 0 oh, as far as those objectives are concerned. And for Fnatic, they're very content. They're playing a little bit fast and loose, but they've got the advantage, they've got the team composition to do so. And you can see, it feels like every time Caps is on screen, he's posturing for a kill, he's threatening some sort of dive. And it's just... It's very suffocating to play if you're on the side of G-Rex and they've just got to try to hold onto these inner turrets as long as possible. Now, what we did see earlier about Fnatic is that, ooh, hang on, a bit of an engage. Yeah, very nicely done, the flawless duet. It interrupts the quickness. There goes the Vanguard. Cap dashes all the way forward. Koala escapes with his life for now. Not long enough. Reckless snipes him down. You can hear Busan cheering in the background. The Rift Herald was summoned. It got a good charge onto that inner top turret, but Fnatic is starting to back away. Here comes PK, throws down the unstoppable onslaught. Hillisack chucks out the Glacial Fisher. So far, he's the first to fall. Now Broxer looking for stitches. Whippo chases forward. The Demonic Ascension Burst blows up the G-Rex HP bars, and Bebe escapes for now. But the tower will not be long for this world. In actual fact, Bebe pounces forward into Reckless's waiting hands. And G-Rex with a delayed ace. And Fnatic, they shut down everyone on the side of G-Rex. It was Hillisang that started that one off. He got a little over eager. He went in while the rest of Fnatic were going out. But ultimately, that was the catalyst to allow Fnatic to walk over towards the Baron and secure another objective. We're in for a pretty quick day, gentlemen. Uh, this is another 22-minute Baron. This is the third game in a row that's been very one side and Fnatic extend that goal lead even further. You know, and the funny thing is, quick shot, I still believe that the final game of the day is also going to be quick just because of how they like to play. But we can see here that Koala, he's just trying to interrupt the Rift Herald spawning. And with that ulti down, Caps is like, okay, he's squishy enough. I can dive this. A good ulti from Reckless on the back end secures the snipe. And then they start to disengage. Yeah, and the only reason they do that is because they want, you know, the split push here from Whippo. He has teleport ready, though, so when Hillisong goes in, uh, they can still have a good outcome because Whippo teleports into the middle of the entire G-Rex team, flashes forward on the Swain to keep this tower dive going, and they're able to clean up the rest of the members. And, of course, that replay brought to you by Ace of Predator with Reckless getting the final kill there on to Bebe, 14 to 4 in kills, 12,000 gold, roughly the advantage for Fnatic. Baron buff secured, and Fnatic are sieging in multiple lanes. Whippo, with the rest of Fnatic, took that top inner. Whippo is now pushing down bottom. The middle inner has already fallen, and Fnatic are just looking to go 2 and 0, oh, and then sitting back and waiting and seeing what they can gleam from the rest of IG's game. So while this is definitely a difficult loss for GRX and the LMS region, for Fnatic fans, this builds a lot of confidence. The fact that they're winning with such dominance and looking for another dive inspires you a lot as they move into the rest of the day. Right now, it's a challenge between Fnatic and IG. Who can win their games harder before the rematch? to set up for the Clash of the Titans. Well, we're going to find out. Koala finds a pretty decent engage with the knockup and the quickness, but unfortunately, there's just not enough damage to follow it up. It's a double kill for Reckless, and as PK gets popped in zombie mode, the inhibitor falls as well. Still a minute and a half left on Baron, and Bebe and Stitch, all that stands from a 0-5 record. Fnatic, they've already tower dive, fountain dive once, this world's group stage, they're not going to do it this time round. Instead, the Nexus turrets fall before 25 minutes. Fnatic take down the Nexus, and they set themselves up for a fight with IG.
It's like you said, top two, bottom two. There is a very, very clear skill and team divide in this group. And Fnatic have left two very big statements for the LPLs in Victor's Gaming. And the analyst has also talked a little bit about both of these teams looking at their opponents' uh, games in the day to try and glean something, maybe some strategy revealed. But honestly, I don't think we've actually learned that much different from either of them in the early day games here in this stage. That just makes the possibility of surprises later that much more exciting. Yep, it certainly does. And the one thing I will say about Fnatic is when we compare this team to last year, uh, Last year, you could argue that they had a more difficult group, but at the same time, they had Caps, who was a rookie. They had uh, they had Prox, who was yep. also a rookie on the international stage, and they also had a different support in Jez's. Now, coming into this year, we heard it from Prox in his last interview, where he felt that playing with the team for longer allowed them to build better synergy. It's not just a lot of individuals now. They are a stronger team. I feel like that what they have demonstrated is that they are a much stronger and a much a uh, more grown Fnatic compared to what we saw last year. Very interesting to see whether or not Fnatic and IG can rein in the excitement and the chaos when they face later in the day. But before we get there, we're going to head to the State Farm Analysis to break down the result. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Quick Shot. Blazing fast game for Fnatic here. Sub 25 minutes in their victory over G-Rex again. Checking the boxes on their road to facing IG at the end of the day. They yep. want that number one seed. Of course, it's the best team I've ever seen in the last 24 minutes. And they <laughs> delivered. <laughs> what a performance. There we go. We all hype. Yeah, very much so. Uh, let's take a look at some of the early action in the top lane out of Whippo in particular. This guy comes in off the bench in place of Soaz with the Swain. I love the aggression that he approaches <laughs> every matchup with. And it feels like you can't go wrong, whether it's Soaz, whether it's Whippo, whether the fact that people keep coming out and trying to dive this guy, and he keeps turning 2v1s on their head. I believe this is like two games back to back where Whippo's like, no, 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 you're stuck in here with me. Yeah, nearly getting the dive kill. The sign eventually died. Then later he's able to get the solo kill. And this is one of the differences between uh, him and Soaz. They said it in the cast, like, Whippo played a lot of Swain, in a different lane of during course. the summer split, but he's also able to pull it out top lane. So uh, you get more aggression, which has its highs and also its lows. This game, we saw all the highs. Yeah, we saw during playoffs, they would always start with Whippo in the best of fives, but if they ended up losing a game, they would then take him out and actually sub in Source instead, because Source is still considered like, the, he's the veteran up in that top lane. And when you have these kind of plays where you are going all in all the time, it's great against a team like G-Rex, but it can really backfire against a team like IG. Do you think it's more so to have Soaz's veteran voice behind stage with the coach in terms of like how you would pivot or what you would pivot on versus him being able to glean something from the 1v1 matchup? So when he goes in, he now has the secrets figured out. I think that definitely helps. It's the kind of jungle strategy we also see from a lot of teams where they leave the, the smarter jungler backstage for game one so he can learn the pathing and get stopped in. I think with Source, it can be the same. But it's also, if you don't have to use Source and you can give Whippo as much experience as possible on stage and playoffs, you're going to do that as Fnatic because he is still one of the guys you're building around for the future. I want to keep building on this conversation in just a moment. Before we get back to it, though, we have to recognize our MasterCard player of the game. Whippo played phenomenally, but Caps is the one who earns the honors in that blind pick Aurelia domination in the mid lane. And he definitely has his work cut out for him because he is looking at Rookie at the very end of the game. So I like the fact that Caps already feels like he's warmed up. Like he stretched, he kind of shook out some of the yeah. jitters, he went for the hardcore plays, and he is not backing down today. Yeah, so much confidence.